What's up guys and welcome uh, to the channel and uh, to the playlist of uh, time series analysis. Finally, we are get getting started uh, in this wonderful journey of uh, time series analysis. And before um, I start, I would like to say that, you know, this uh, YouTube playlist will help uh, three kind of viewers. The first one who are totally new into time series and wants to get uh, some kind of uh, foothold into time series before they commit more time and energy into time series i think they will find it really uh, useful uh, then it will be also useful uh, for people who have uh, done some kind of uh, online uh, training um, but you know th they want to reinforce um, uh, their concepts um, it will be useful for them uh, this playlist will also be um, useful for ml practitioners who want to get um, uh, time series into production, especially the end of the um, uh, of this particular time series, where I'll be talking about uh, tips and tricks um, uh, of putting uh, time series um, uh, into production. So uh, hold your breath, and uh, I hope you will watch all the videos uh, that are coming in this particular uh, playlist. But for this video, let's get started with what is a time series. So my friends. Time series is very important. It is there everywhere. It is there in engineering system. It is there in economic system. It is there also in financial uh, systems. It is uh, everywhere, even government systems. So what is a time series? Time series is actually a sequence of data point index over time. So it's very simple. You have one variable which you want to measure over a time, then it becomes a univariate time series. So that particular data point or that variable which you are monitoring over a period of time, it could be daily, it could be monthly, it could be yearly, even every decade, every 10 years. Uh, that is one example uh, of time series for univariate. And if you are monitoring two such data points, example, temperature and humidity, then it's multivariate time series. Okay. So that is the definition. Okay. Sequence of data points indexed over time because data point is on your y-axis and your indexing of the time is on your x-axis all right now a few examples uh, of time series uh, i think um, all of us like the example um, iot is an in thing now so when you're monitoring the temperature of an iot based system it, it, sh it should not ideally fluctuate every moment every five minutes right then you have a problem but it can be used uh, to continuously monitor an IoT device and send up alerts or triggers when an anomaly uh, is reached. Uh, epidemic uh, tracking, uh, like you know, uh, the government and the health department around the world, they track epidemic and time series is a wonderful tool for tracking uh, epidemic. Uh, GDP, financial GDP is uh, tracked uh, uh, through time series, one of the tools of tracking time series. Uh, and also you can track stock index like uh, S&P 500 uh, index, um, um, Sensex, Bombay Stock Exchange, so on and so forth. Primary users, as I've told in my examples, are forecasting in which you try to predict what will be the future value. So looking at the set of my present value, I predict my future value. And if you are an ML engineer, you are a machine learning practitioner, you know that since I'm using my current data points when my data is leveled, this belongs to the genre of uh, supervised uh, machine learning and we use traditional methods from modern methods like XGBoost even and also neural networks in our time series. All right. Exploratory data analysis uh, used by data analysts in using time series is another use of uh, time series. Anomaly detection I already told you when I was talking about the example of IoT. It is used widely in reporting uh, be it government reporting, financial reporting. So time series is, is a wonderful tool when you want to report um, um, data, all right? Now here is one um, example which you can see visually. So this is the indexing over time. This is a price index. Uh, let's, let's say this is an US price index uh, for, for one of the markets. And then this is the index uh, value. And this is the index value, how it has changed over the, for every decade, every 10 years, starting from 1960 to 2020 and you can see that there is an upward rise and you know such kind of upward rise or downward rise uh, is called a trend. Similarly you can also have a downward trend. This uh, this um, time series talks about the price of eggs 
uh, in uh, every 10 years or every decade and the price of egg is uh, decreasing so there is again a decreasing uh, trend. Now since I have already talked about trend now it would be interesting I think to look at the decomposition of time series it's very very easy super easy okay so there are four things you need to remember when you are decomposing a time series and why do you why do you decompose first you can say Amirban that's fine there are four parts to to a time series okay four four uh, four parts when we decompose a time series but why on earth I would need to decompose them well you see nothing if when you are forecasting data magic will not happen so based on certain mathematical property you forecast the data using time series correct so I think what you need what we do essentially in time series forecasting is we try to find the components of the time series try to understand it try to do some kind of uh, fitment and once we have dissected the data uh, we we do uh, the forecast by you know pulling those components again into our uh, model correct so that's the reason we do the decomposition of time series to understand the original data points better and then use them in our favor while forecasting when creating a new model correct so there are four things uh, in terms of decomposition of a time series the first is level level is nothing but the base or the average uh, that you have uh, for a time series so if a time series is something like this okay and it's going over a period of time your um, uh, your level is the average uh, of uh, all the points so your level is uh, probably here please note that all the time series in the world have two things mandatorily one is level and one is noise level and noise so there are two mandatory components in a time series one is a level and the second is a noise level is an average because all numbers will have an average and that's the reason you can plot an average correct so it will have uh, a level a noise is the randomness which we can't predict okay and it is, we 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 have to just leave them it is not so useful for us but it is mandatorily present in all time series so these are the two components level and noise which are mandatory there are two optional components one is a trend and this is the upward and downward movement which I was talking so if if your uh, time series slows an upward trend or a downward trend example here the index uh, is growing upward as you can see and the price of X is, is reducing every decade so these are an example of upward and downward trend uh, respectively so that leaves us with seasonality now seasonality is interesting because seasonality is nothing but the pattern that repeats after a fixed scale of time certain business are, are seasonal certain are not and that's the reason seasonality is not mandatory in in time series but if it is there it becomes very important because your business tend to repeat in particular cycle there are certain kind of services business there are certain kind of product business which are seasonal in, in nature by design and there are certain cases where it becomes seasonal as as the data points move uh, through time okay so understanding that pattern uh, if we can understand that pattern of seasonality we can build our forecasting model uh, to you know predict nearly accurate value based on our seasonality factor if uh, they are uh, present now we also I also need to talk about uh, three models in time series and at least just give you the intuition I'll go into the details of these three um, type of models uh, in the next video and they are additive multiplicative and the mixed models uh, in time series and additive model is happens when you add the level trend and uh, seasonality uh, of the time series and um, this kind of time series uh, looks um, something like this so so if you're drawing an additive uh, time series this will look something like this suppose you you have um, the data points and there is some kind of uh, seasonality uh, in the time series there is some kind of trend also uh, in the time series but the amplitude of the seasonality is constant look at uh, the wavelength 
of uh, each uh, each block of time series so what i mean is that if you dissect this time series into you know blocks and say t1 t2 and t3 you would see uh, that uh, the uh, the peaks uh, the peak center of the maxima and the minima are the same in each block and this is an example of additive because your level and trend and seasonality are additive in nature they add to each other on the contrary you can also have time series which are multiplicative in which in a way the uh, the seasonality explodes as it you know as it grows and you can see that the seasonality is actually uh, the seasonality here is actually spreading out it's multiplicative uh, in nature and such a model or multiplicative model when you have it as uh, level into trend into uh, seasonality okay there is also a, a there is also a case uh, which is mixed in nature and this is more practical uh, for, uh, and this happens in most cases because the time series we find in our real work um, are mostly not so intuitive as these two examples which i have showed you that you can look at it and quickly say that you know what my uh, time series is additive or my time series is multiplicative sometimes it is possible sometimes it is better that we take the middle path and we frame a model which is like a mixed model and in in a mixed model we multiply the seasonality with the sum of level plus trend so l plus t total of l plus t into uh, s so uh, we look more into this two examples uh, in uh, video 2 especially uh, uh, for additive and uh, multiplicative um, uh, time series but i think um, this video was useful in very short way um, to give you the uh, necessary point to get uh, started uh, in time series and i'll catch up with you in the next video where we look into more finer details um, of time series thank you so much guys um, please put in a comment if you have any questions please like subscribe press the bell notification button and do check uh, the description for interesting uh, updates and offers